If I had a nickel for every time there was a 3D animated death battle, sponsored as scored by Bird on Yates, featuring a total swordsman covered in armor, that happened to be one of the best episodes of the entire show, I would have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but hey, subscribe to the channel straight up free. As you may tell by the thumbnail, I don't quite I don't quite plan to make this a normal review, since I don't think it's what this episode deserves. So let's get my thoughts on the breakdown out of the way first and foremost. They're great. I love how much time they delve into exploring the men behind the spooky masks. Especially in Anakin's case, where they go over the flawed and broken boy before delving into the monster he turned into. And even then, the first thing they do once they get to Vader is highlight the torturous life he lives underneath his suit, almost to black comedy levels given how much of a dick Palpatine is. Then they go over the unstoppable badass most fans describe when thinking of Vader, often in glorified fashion without mentioning the first two thirds I mentioned. So W on the team for this ballsy move. The breakdown as a whole follows the same level of quality as it did for Yoda and Kenobi, keeping an almost documentary level of summary to our ever expanding multimedia franchise, but with a lot of humanity to get invested in and humor to get entertained by in order to avoid making this an info dump. Good stuff. Also, at one point I thought they said Anakin went to trauma and trauma instead of trauma and drama. Drama and trauma aside. And I didn't think too much of it because they're both unfortunately accurate. Them out. Going back to the calling out problematic stuff topic, I really appreciate how they underline the sheer fucked upness of Anakin and Obito being essentially drafted into wars while being mere children. That will not turn you into a mentally adjusted adult no matter what, and it's a horror to play both fiction and reality. So another W on the team for not closing over that. Speaking of good old Toby, not that Toby, I wasn't as familiar with the character outside my research, but by goodness these two have parallels outside of being fallen heroes. Orphans naturally gifted with their respective spiritual energies, taken in by supernatural warrior groups, dreams of peace, losing a loved one, metaphorical death of self followed by new aliases and reborn bodies, given by less than ideal mentors and ultimately redemption before being embraced by death, which both of their breakdowns end and on, making for a beautiful symmetry. I don't know what else to add, the breakdowns are great, the music is nice, they have one slapstick joke and it's actually funny, and I finally understood how the dream treat thingy works, and it's a, which is essential for the fight later on. To be honest, the second ERB Vader appeared on screen, I should have known this episode was gonna be peak before the fight even began. Speaking of... The fight opens with this beautiful shot of the moon, making it a part of the story from beginning to end, as Obito looks down in self-reflection. Vader makes himself known by referencing Star Wars Rebels in both entrance and dialogue, saying he seeks Obito's shining an eye for himself. He also says he senses two-thirds of the things that usually lead to the dark side, I sense your fear, your anger. leaving out aggression since Obito goes for a more show don't tell approach in the department. The Fallen Ninja with us that Vader will have to kill him to get what he wants, since he wants to use his power to save this cursed world. You'll have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. Very important for later, but right now I guess it's a good time as I need to praise both for his actor for their job, with Nicholas Andrew Louis having also voiced Haru Uchiha Madara in season 8, which is neat since Obito canonically posed as Madara in his own story, so him using the same voice is perfect. Jason Manoncha also reprises his role from Vader vs Magneto, which is very neat. Vader proceeds to politely decline all of Vito's zits with the using the force, before stabbing him and acting all cocky. Except Obito gets back up as if they were having just a casual chat, as he now clips to the ground, attacking Vader personally by throwing sand at him, of all things. Obito realizes that he's not really a fan of the slicey dicey sword his opponent brought, as so he now clips to it without looking in an extremely saucy moment. To good gaming wins, you know I gotta win the sauce. Speaking of boldness, Vader's intimidating power walk as he barely puts any effort into blocking his opponent's attacks, look at him, he barely leaves his arm, are the last ins instances of cockiness he displays before Obito pulls out the mother of all Dede moves and Skywalker twins, creating an illusion of Anakin's late wife, Padme. Now, with both opponents not really following a realistic house style the model state currently have, Padme's realistic face only appearing makes it a bit jarring, but the way it disappears just as quickly uh, upgraded to unsettling instead, at least for me. Vader is one to agree, and his reaction to Uchiha's trick is one of characteristic cold fury, for scratching Obito's eye in one of the feelingly many callbacks to Obi-Wan vs Kakashi this episode has. Reminded that this is what Vader came for in the first place, so he stopped being a retrieval mission and is now personal. 
Obito showcases a superior agility and speed as he breaks Vader's helmet, cracking his mask in return. And in this fight, it's not just the physical masks that get destroyed over time, but the figurative ones as well, because from now on, Obito stops using his Madwar voice and switches to a normal one, in what's yet another great display of the voice actor range. After they both pull a return of the Jedi on each other with their respective telekinesis, the resulting impact reveals Vader's robotic nature to his opponent, prompting this moment. You've lost your humanity as well. On the path of the dark side, it is inevitable. I was planning to say that this is exactly the type of stuff I would like to see in the previous episode, but I honestly would much rather have it here a thousand times over. I love this exchange, a moment of common ground, where both opponents recognize each other's similarities, but it's not just that. Obito is so caught off guard by Revelation that he regains his composure, which cracked alongside his mask seconds before. Notice how his model also now shows his true post-rebirth body underneath, aka the synthetic Setsubei skin. Vader doesn't even Vader doesn't even deny that he's what his opponent says, as he pretty much replies with Yeah, I did lose my humanity. It's what happened to me with the path I chose to take. The fallen ninja takes advantage of Vader's slow response to summon a nightmarish Keiju, aka the Dentils, which amusingly enough the level finds just impressive. Not even most impressive, because in space you're bound to see some weird shit, I tell you. This entire sequence is filled to the brim with screenshot worthy cinematography. Devil Artemis, you're amazing. Vader knocks out the explosion toward him, before gazing towards the god tree Obito just summoned as he enters his damn tail's form. He also replies saying this is inevitable. in a very young and brushed tone that perfectly contrasts with Vader's eternally calm demeanor, essentially saying no, this is what happened to you. We also see Vader's ship in the background, making, making this appearance follow a 1 2 3 rhythm that just shows how nicely planned this whole thing was, instead of randomly disappearing till it's needed. In this form, Anakin's opponent is on much more equal footing with him, resulting in a fast paced sequence that ends with the former losing a hand. He's a Skywalker, alright. Vader's unmasking process reaches his final non dreamlike phase as his helmet being broken reveals his demonic red eyed face underneath, yet another chilling shot. In a blink and you miss it, Vader starts turning around before Obito actually the poster, subtly showing his precognition powers, still to be superior by the end analysis. After another force bash and clever usage of the aforementioned ship, Vader interestingly says Send this gift and die. And ironically it's Obito the one to give him a present. Too late. Before which the climax of the endless praise I've been giving this episode so far, this entire moment was just chilling. I have no idea how it was in Naruto or how fe fans felt doing it, but the story reveal, sound effect, the moon turning red as the infinite Tsukuyomi activates, I don't know, it just gave me a very game over feel, as if I really was too late to stop anything, which would be true if I were Vader in this scene right here. The zoom on his eye, his look softening, the gas man is wet, the subtle shine gun symbol, the fucking music as Anakin himself appears in the flesh again, in a familiar place, with the most important person in his life. The music, I got, I already said it, I don't care, it's amazing. I just can't think of any way to describe how I felt during this moment the first time I watched it, beyond the tone of voice I'm using right now. <laughs> Obito deems Anakin you are liberated from hell and wishes him to find peace in the next life, implicitly saying that he clearly couldn't do it in the current one, and you know that he fully means it because recognition is an actual thing in Naruto. In his last moments, Anakin now has a serene expression, most notably his eyes, they reverted to being blue again. The DNA shift sword that Obito uses, mind you, disintegrates things on a physical and spiritual level. This means that Anakin got turned into nothing and he didn't feel any pain, for the first time in probably decades. The infinite Tsukuyomi isn't just a mere illusion, it traps your mind in the life you always wanted mentally and chronologically, aka the affected ones spend what feels like an entire lifetime in just a moment. 
For all we know, Obito may then can spend the most fulfilling life he's ever had, with his mother alive, Palpatine being arrested, his wife and children being alive as well, him reaching the Jedi ranks he always desired, maybe even dying of old age surrounded by his fans and family, right before being turned into nothingness. I'm honestly tempted to call this the best killing blow in the entire series, as it's pretty much an act of empathy. What someone would call another over-lingering shot, I actually interpreted as Obito reflecting on everything that just transpired, the similarity he had with the warrior he just fought. Granted, it's more clear in the storyboards. The last, the last few seconds with the flames though, I agree, they linger on a bit too much. To say that many, many people were left unhappy with Vader not only taking an L but a second one in the show would be a most impressive understatement. But I, but I honestly feel like leaving my thoughts on the topic of disagreeing with the DB verdicts for another time. I do disagree with the notion that Vader as the, was done dirty, as he was pretty much dominating base from Orbito tanked the tentacle snuke, and even without the lightsaber and broken limbs, he still went down fighting. Obito literally won because of things meant to be win coins, also known as X to us power skin and weirdos, not because Vader did any less than all he could. But let's get into the nitty gritty. I'm gonna do something I've never done before, as there are three consecutive teams I wanna discuss regarding this episode. Team 1 is prevalent throughout the fight as a whole. Team 2 link links itself directly to the musical score and overall narrative parallels, and Team 3 is the main one in this matchup in general, so let's get into it. Team 1 Masks Something tangling overshadowed as early as the revealed trailer, but all these characters were spooky masks. One does it for necessity, too, but they ultimately are both covering the form itself with new releases. And once more, both of the masks get cracked throughout the fight, and not just physically speaking. It's always nice whenever there is battle damage in these uh, battles, you know, showing that they did went through a fight to the death and not just a scaffold that happened to end with gore. In this battle, it is a story being told, where Velbito stood out in his Madura persona, both in voice and looks, before his true self is revealed shortly after, using his normal voice and losing composure like he does with his mask. Then there's a formation reveal of, of his Zetsu based off. From now on, it's more of a power up than another reveal, but everything it he does an inspiring move to his opponent, speaks volumes about who, is in, who he really is internally, more than later. Vader, on the other hand, starts fully armored, then his eye gets uncovered, his robot legs revealed, his hand shattered, his helmet crushed, and we see the man who once was underneath all that machinery. We do not get any lines in Anakin's voice, which is not to say that this moment needed any worse, it just it would be nice to have a three great character relevant exchanges in a row. Team 2, letting go. The musical track for this episode, That's No Moon, references both how Obi-Wan described the Death Star Station Vader helped build, and the Eye on the Moon plan that Obito helped orchestrate, making it a brilliant title. The cover art is most narratively relevant in DVD's history, as it pictures the God Tree activating the infinite Tsukuyomi, again, like in the battle, but you also see Obito and Vader's arms wrapped in his pedals. Are, trying to get, are they trying to get out? Do they wanna stay here? Most importantly, look at the surrounding items. Obito's glasses when he was a kid, Anakin, and an Anakin lightsaber when he was a Jedi. They both possess a form of telekinesis, so are they letting go of such items, or are they reaching out to them? The fact that there are so many interpretations of what this is showing makes this artwork brilliant to me. Now I would comment on the track itself, given how amazing it sounds during the battle, but as of the time of this recording, it hasn't been released yet, I'm not sure why. This brings us to the final team. Disclaimer, I am aware of how cheesy this will sound, but hear me out for a bit. I believe the core theme of this episode is hatred versus love. Hear me out. The tragedy of Darth Vader the Fallen is one where he ultimately decides to choose hatred. Hatred for everyone he feels wronged by, like the Jedi or the Obi-Wan. Hatred for the Emperor that put him in this state. And most of all, hatred for himself and all he has done. He's even powered by hatred. What once was a boy with dreams of peace is now an harbinger for the power of hatred. And while what I just said perfectly matches both characters, given the Uchiha curse, if you think about it, Obito is still motivated by the albeit twisted sense of love towards others. 
If all he wanted was to live in his happy dream world, he could have locked himself in there and call it a day. The well, life. But no, he wanted everyone on earth to be free of the pain and sorrow the real world brought him. By putting him in an endless, blissful dream. So when meeting someone who's pretty much been wearing their own coffin of pain and sorrow 24-7, there's only one logical outcome in his mind. I only had pain inside here before, but really, what's the meaning in that? So I abandoned it all. Meanwhile, you have suffered all this time. It's okay now. You don't need to suffer anymore. Wish for whatever you want. Anything is possible in this Genjutsu world. That hole in your heart can be filled immediately. Hi guys, uh, Ark of Krypton here. This part right here is, wasn't actually scripted, it's just something that I really felt like adding be before the actual conclusions. I just wanted to say that this episode means a lot to me as someone who very often uses fictional stories and characters to get away from reality. I know a thing or two about uh, pretending to be a dream instead of living the complexities of life and I got a lot better about this uh, over time I managed to find the right balance I still love stories as much as I did without using them as a replacement for reality in fact in recent years I learned to appreciate reality a lot because of such stories so it's kind of an inverse of the infinite Sukuyomi but still I just want to say that this episode captivated me unlike anything that battle has ever done and uh, I'm not really sure if uh, that came across enough during this episode so I really wanted to be sure and I also wanted to take this occasion to do a shout out to two fellow versus YouTube channels aka Galactic Attorney and Capsirus, Capsirus? I, I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing it right sorry basically Galactic Attorney had this thing at the end of his latest review that means Stitch vs Rocket where he basically gave the occasion for other versus channels to you know be plugged into his videos and get some recognition they deserve and uh, I I left a comment on, on his Twitter page because for some reason YouTube was bugging. So I just I would like to steal that idea from you, attorney. Hopefully you won't sue me over it. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to I just wanted to let you know that if you're another this channel, you can also leave a leave a comment down here in this video for a possible shout out in the future. That way we can all help each other out. I that that has always been my life philosophy to help each other out because without helping each other we won't be anywhere would we and I also want, wanted to give a shout out to Cap Series because uh, we had uh, a similar ideas over how we do thumbnails with, uh, with our avatars reacting to the actual battle taking place and uh, yeah I just wanted to give a shout out to them please go follow and subscribe to their content and yeah back to the actual part you are meant to see right now bye so yeah, if I ranked the Chosen Bone 10 out of 10, Obi Vader is 11 out of 10 for me. From the breakdowns to the fight, interaction, animation, the visuals, the music, the emotion. <laughs> Man, they really love putting their A game for Naruto and Star Wars. Next time is uh, something I admittedly was very unhyped for at first, but the more I think about it, the more I think they can pull out some cool stuff. We did just get 4 non-Marvel vs DC team in the episode, and was an extremely refreshing change of pace. So I'm not too bothered by returning to cape shit. That said, I am in still no early to review this episode either once it drops, as I would much rather focus on a certain project of mine, but still, I'll get to it, eventually. I'm Uncle Critton, and I hope I made your day slightly better.